Hello everybody, this is just a quick tutorial on how to complete the mystery of the far-flung fossil if you're absent or if you've fallen behind and you need to get caught up at home. This way, the, these directions that I'm going to give you orally are the same ones you basically get in class and I'm going to show you all the resources you need in order to finish this. So the first thing we're going to talk about is reading the background information. So go through and read this carefully. But basically, here's the gist of what you're going to be doing. You're going to be pretending as if you were a geologist back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and you have gotten all this data and you've collected all these fossils. And now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be interpreting the evidence. So when you found fossils in Antarctica and Australia and Africa and South America, what do these fossils mean? And what about the fossils from the different time periods? So the green rock is from 100 million years ago. The blue rock right here says is our modern day fossils that you found. And the yellow rock is 200 million years ago. And the red rock, red rocks is from 300 million years ago. So you're going to be taking all this fossil evidence and you're going to be interpreting it. So the very first thing you need to do is you need to collect data. So you're going to fill in this data. And the resource that you're going to need, you will find in Google Classroom. I posted a link to this folder. And so you know how it says green, yellow, red, blue in the fossil catalog? So that corresponds to the blue, the green, the yellow, and the red. Now notice the different continents you have here. So South America, Africa, India, Australia, Antarctica. So if I go back there, and if I start with the green and I click on it, now let's start with the, yeah, let's start with the green. And I click on it, you've got two images. If you open up the first one, you see that there's Africa and Australia. And if we were to go back and click on the other one, you have South America, Antarctica, and India. And again, those corresponds to the different continents that you have here, or subcontinents, because some of them aren't technically full continents. So what do you do? So if I go back here and I see South America, I see this fossil evidence. Now you can always zoom in if you want and get closer. So what you have to do is you have to record in South America what this creature is. Now, the way that you find that is you go back to the fossil catalog. And if you go into the fossil catalog, you're gonna look for a picture that matches up. Now, what I would suggest you do is, is maybe have this open in one tab and then the pictures in another tab. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to look for that. So let me go back once and let's take another look. We were in the green rock layer and let's go into the second one. So look at that creature right there. You can see how it looks. So now if we go back into the catalog, you're going to look for that creature. And that creature looks like this one right here. So Serenosaurus. So what you're going to do, now do you remember what continent that was? Again, so if we go back here and look at it, that was in South America. And that's the only one you see. So what I would do is go into the green rock layer, because that's green, the continents are green, so it's color-coded like that. And for, again, South America, you can see it says South America, I'm going to put the Cenosaurus. So I would type that out. And what you're going to do is you're going to fill out this whole sheet. Now, some of the rock layers, they just have one dinosaur. But here's Antarctica. They actually have two different ones. Some of the places, they don't have dinosaurs, but they actually have um, other types of fossil evidence. They have plants. Sometimes they have worms. And so you're going to be interpreting all that evidence. So here's some plant evidence and then also some other evidence. I'm not going to necessarily say that they're all technically dinosaurs. So there's two different plant materials and there's this one in South Africa. So you're going to have to go through each of the continents and you're going to fill in your data. Now, once you fill in your data and you scroll down, you're going to answer these questions. So based on your data, 
you're going to look at this. So it says, on the basis of what you found in the red rocks, which continents had similar fossils? So you're going to look at your red rock layer here, and you're going to look at the data and say, okay, where is there some similarities? Do we have any fossil evidence that says what was in India was in Australia? So you're looking for combinations where they're identical or pretty close to being identical, and that's where how you would answer this. And then you says from the fossil evidence, so which continents had similar fossils? And then from this fossil evidence, which continents seem to have been connected? And you're going to do it for each of the rock layers. Now, here's the tricky part. If you're at home, you may not be able to get this next part because you're going to put Pangaea together. However, if you are in school, make sure, and you're trying to get caught up at home, make sure you pick up a copy of Pangaea before you go so you can cut out all the continents and glue it in the to the correct spot. So you're going to need to get that for me if you're in class and you're doing it late. If you're at home and you're in quarantine or you've been sick and you haven't been getting to school, just finish up the rest of the lab. So once you finish up that, you're just going to finish the rest of these questions and everything that you have is right here. Some of it you're going to have to infer. You might look at it and say, how am I supposed to know? How am I supposed to know? Well, based on the evidence that you have, based on the fossil evidence, based on what it tells you, you're going to have to put two and two together. You're going to have to infer, and you're going to have to figure out how to answer some of these. So just coming and saying, I don't know. How am I supposed to know? You're supposed to infer, and that's what we want you to do. We want you to think for yourself and, and take your thinking to that next level. So you should be able to finish up the lab. And just a reminder that if you are at home and you haven't been to school for a while and you finish this up, you just need to email me and let me know. Or if you are finishing it late and you're in class every day, you just need to bring it up there in class and show me that you're done so I can mark this off. So if you have any questions, make sure you email your teacher. Otherwise, all the directions are here, and I just gave all the directions verbally, but if you go through the written directions, it's pretty self-explanatory as well. And one thing I do want to remind you of is make sure you use complete sentences prior to turning it in so I can give you some credit. Thank you.